In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a very strong joint, but a really simple joint too. This is a perfect joint for beginners. Hi everybody, I'm Lee of CJ Drill, and if this is your first time here, can I just say welcome to you? We're a home improvement channel where beginners are welcome as well. Now today's video is a woodworking video. I'm going to show you a very simple joint, but it's a very strong joint called a bridle joint. It's very, very strong. You know, once the two components are put together, it creates an incredibly strong joint. Now, the reason for that is this here. It's all this real estate. So when you glue it up, you've got a lot of long grain to long grain. And that creates a very strong joint. It's perfect for the beginner. Now, to create our bridle joint, we're going to be using the table saw. Now, you can cut a bridle joint by hand, but we're going to be using a table saw to do ours. And we're going to need a jig, and that's what this is. Now, many of you are saying, oh, Leah, not a jig. But here's the thing. If you're going to get into woodworking, I guarantee you, you're going to have to know how to make jigs. It's just part of woodworking. And a jig is just a tool that helps another tool do its job. What I want to tell you is very simple to do, especially this jig, okay? Because we're just looking at three sides. That's it. It's like a sleeve. Three sides and one little piece of wood to hold our piece of wood in place as we feed it through the table saw. Now the way our jig works is you insert it over the fence on your table saw and you want it snug up against the fence. You don't want there to be any play in it because then that's going to throw off your cut. So it should be nice and tight, but not so tight that you can't slide it freely. Now what will happen is this works as a stop. I'm going to put, put a piece of wood here and you clamp it in place and then you can feed it through the blade. And that's how this jig will work. So here are our two pieces of stock. This is what we're going to create our joint with. It's three quarters of an inch. So we have three quarters. And we have to keep that in mind because we're going to slice it in three. We're going to slice it in three sections. Now what you want to do with your wood is you want to divide it into threes, okay? Three slices. Now, once you divide it into three, you take your joint. Now, let me move this out of the way. This is going to be a, a, a clear representation of what we need to do. Now, here's two pieces. This represents the two pieces that we're going to join together, okay? Now, what you have to do is you have to look at the segments here, the three segments. You have to identify waste, which is penciled in. That's our waste. This is waste. And what isn't penciled in, this segment, we save. Now the adjoining piece, well, it's just the opposite. We save this segment, we save this segment, and we remove the penciled segment. Once we do that, then we can marry the two pieces together. Now it's time for us to set up our saw blade. Make certain that you disconnect your saw. You don't want to energize while you're making adjustments to the blade because you don't want to lose your fingers, right? Now what we need to do is we need to raise the blade to the width of one of our pieces of wood here, okay? Because you, what you have to remember is this. The pieces have to join like this, so we know that one of our cuts needs to be, one of our cuts needs to be the width of this piece of wood. We're going to use the saw blade here to determine the height. I'm going to raise this saw blade up, and I'm going to just use my finger here to determine if I've been on the money or not. And I am. Now it's time for me to take my setup bar here and set the distance between the blade and the jig. And the way I do that is I take, I take my precision setup bar and I set it right next to the outside of my saw blade here. Now I'm going to bring in my jig and I'm going to make my adjustments. Everything looks right on the money here. Now I'm ready to make the cut. Now we're ready to make our first cut. I've got my stock 
clamp to my jig and we're ready to just feed it through the blade. We've made our first cut. We just need to flip it to the other side because keep in mind, the blade has already been set. So just flipping it will be all that we need to do. Okay, I've made my cuts. Now all I have to do is eliminate the waste. And the waste is here. This is my waste. And the outside is my waist. I'm saving the center. Now, when you're using a cross-cut gauge like this one here, okay, you don't use the fencing combination with it because then that gets, you know, dangerous. So maybe you're thinking, well, how do you make uh, repeat cuts? And make certain that every cut you make, if you have to make a series of the same cuts over and over and over again, you want them to all be perfectly uh, the same size, you do something, you use something called a mag switch. That's what this is. And you use this as a stop, okay? Now what I will tell you is a mag switch, you have to think of it as a magnet that you can turn on and off. You just hit this button at the top and it secures it to the table of the table saw. And then you can just use it as a guide and then make that cut. And then come back, do it again, make that cut. It acts as a stop and it doesn't pose the same danger that a fence would if you were using your fence in your miter gauge to control the length of your cut. I'll place a link in the description below the video to the mag switch in the event you want to check it out for yourself. Our two pieces have been cut, and now it's just time to join the two together. Here are our two pieces that have been cut. Now we just have to put the two pieces together. And what I want to tell you is this. You want there to be a little resistance. You don't want there to be any play in the joint. You don't want it to be loose. So it might require us to tap it a little bit. If you're new to woodworking, you'll want to learn as many joints as possible to keep you away from fasteners like screws or, or nails, okay? If you can do wood joints, it just opens up the door to so many projects you'll be comfortable doing. This is Leah saying you can do this. See you next time.